Okay, a little housework out of the way there. Congratulations to Maryland. Uh, we are at a national championship press conference. Maryland wins its third national championship, joining its 2017 and 1973 teams. They finished the year with an undefeated 18-0 uh, record. We have head coach John Tillman. We have student athletes Logan McKaney and Anthony DeMeo with us. Um, we will start with a statement from Coach Tillman. Then we'll have questions from student athletes. Then we'll have questions from Coach Tillman. Um, for those in person, Sophia and Joe are two mic holders. If you get the mic from them, please identify yourself. And for those that are on Zoom, if you could raise your virtual hand, we'll get to as many people as we can. But uh, Coach, congratulations, and uh, if you give us something to say. Please. Sure. Uh, I think first thing, uh, I think I'd be remiss not giving a shout out to Cornell on uh, the Cornell lacrosse program. Um, by far the hardest game we had all year. Um, just representing their school, the alums, um, you know, so well today. A um, lot to be proud of. I've been in that lap room, it's really hard. There's a lot of tears. Um, but man, just nothing but respect for them, that coaching staff, those players. Um, so hard in this moment, but so much to be proud of. Great tradition, and obviously they just continue to extend that tradition uh, year after year. So great future for them. Um, in terms of our guys, um, you know, having been in that type of locker room and not seen the success to see our guys smiling at the end, uh, especially given where we were 365 days uh, ago. Uh, just so happy for them. Um, this team, like probably the best word described as selfless. Um, so many guys that were willing to do whatever to kind of get us a chance to get back here with no guarantee. Uh, so many guys that have made sacrifices, um, including these two guys. Um, and I could go down through all 48 guys and, and each guy just rattle off so many things they've done. But proud of them. Um, today we expected it to be hard and, and obviously built a little bit of a cushion and kind of hung on. Uh, I'm not sure what happened if there was another quarter, but um, again, just kind of grinding it out, which these guys have done when they needed to, um, but just proud of them, I love them, and uh, just happy for our state, our school, and our program, and our alums. Okay, if you raise your hand with questions for student athletes, we will... Uh... Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Uh, Anthony, the slow offensive start for the team, and then all of a sudden it was boom, boom, boom with your goals again. What, what did you find? Is that what Benson talked about in the timeout, about that pass across the middle? Uh, I mean, Coach always does a great job preparing us. Um, I think they were just settling down, getting into a rhythm of the game. Um, in the second half, we obviously struggled, but um, just sticking together the whole time. We got six guys that can it can be anyone at any point, and that's just the selflessness of this team. And uh, that's kind of how we got here, and we kind of fell back on that in the first and second quarter, and I think that that's what led us. So we'll go right here in the red shirt, then we'll get the green shirt. Uh, also, for Anthony, um, you've kind of been emphasizing, it seems, every time that we talk to you after a game, job's not finished. Now that the job is finished, just how does it feel? Uh, I mean, it feels great. Obviously, being there in 2017, having that feeling, and then just seeing the guys, all, all 48 guys around me, and seeing the smiles on their faces, the coaches. Uh, I mean, there's so many guys that made so many sacrifices this year and did so many great things for this team, whether they were playing or not. There's so many things behind closed doors that guys are doing. And just to see the smiles on everyone's faces, um, it's a moment that no one can ever take back from you. And that's kind of just what, what makes me go every day. This one's for Logan. Uh, I just have to know, how close were you to shooting that ball? Uh, pretty close. Uh, I saw uh, the Cornell boy Chase Irwin. Uh, he was kind of playing. A uh, man and a half with the goal, so I uh, toss over to Matt Ray Hill. You know, he, he scored a goal earlier this season against Virginia. I thought he was going to do the same thing, but um, worked out in the end. Yeah. Okay, second row, we'll go with the, the two guys there. Uh, Nicky will have the back. Logan, uh, just how does the dream of winning national championship compare to the reality right now? Yeah, growing up, I'm sure I can speak for all the guys on the team, even the coaches, you know, growing up. Going up where? Corner you were, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You know, growing up, uh, going to some of the Final Four tournaments, watching on TV, um, playing at camps, like reenacting, like um, swimming heat when you go for the national championship, and 
figured out to play goalie, um, but um, just growing up and seeing uh, all the other teams do what they did and then going out there and doing it ourselves is, is pretty special to me. Uh, Logan, uh, 19 saves on Saturday, 17 today. What is it about championship weekend that helps you to see the ball so well? Yeah, um, I, th I think I go into every game with the same mentality. Um, try not to get too riled up, stay calm, you know. Um, but I knew going into um, the weekend that it was going to be challenging for the rest of the guys on the team with the heat and everything, the hydration and all that. Um, playing two games in three days. Um, we practiced that throughout the season. And um, just knew I had to come in, see ball, see ball. Third run, blue shirt. Uh, John Benner, WBC. Uh, this is for anyone. Um, Throughout the year, especially towards the end of the year, you begin to hear murmurs like, could this team be one of the best ever? And uh, now that the journey's over, I'm, one, I'm curious, do you think that, that this team is one of the best ever? <laughs> oh, I thought you were letting these guys talk. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll get to coach in a second. The answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, there's been so many great teams over the years. Uh, I think what we did was just focus on getting better day by day, uh, not kind of worried about that, not looking at all the social media stuff, and just focusing on us. I mean, that we had this end goal in mind, but it was taking it day by day. And, I mean, whether people want to say we're the best team ever or not, I mean, we're national champions, and that's all that matters. Look, it's having teams. When you kind of look at the way that Cornell spins the ball around, they're one of the better teams in the country, maybe one of the you guys. Uh, what did you guys do defensively to kind of stymie them and, and kind of bottle them up there early from the first, I don't know, 45 minutes or so? Uh, over communication. Um, we knew going into the game, we had a solid game plan. Uh, we knew that their guys were very capable of moving the ball around, dodging our, um, our shorties, our um, long sticks. Um, but we knew that they, um, they were going to spin the ball around and uh, cut, move around, uh, kind of make us turn our heads a little bit, slide. Um, but um, we had a good game plan going into it. We're going to go uh, to the Zoom for a second on uh, Philly Sports Blitz with a question for the Maryland student athletes. Question for the athletes. Can you just talk about the challenge that it was trying to go the entire season undefeated? Challenge yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, when when you lose a game, um, you have to look back and look at more things. But I think that our coaches and I mean, training staff through all the social media people, like everyone, does a great job of looking back at the game and making adjustments. I mean, we didn't play a perfect game the whole season, and I mean, at times you would feel like we did lose, and that's what made this team so good as we just holding ourselves to higher standards at all times. Uh, no matter what the score was, how much we won by, it was always just making the next play. We could always do something better, and that's kind of what this team this team was. Front row over here, for sure. Andy, if any doubt or even at the end there, how scoreless for nearly 27 minutes at the end, it just seemed like you guys ran out of gas a little bit. Uh, personally, personally, I did not have any doubt. Uh, I know Brent and those D guys, Logan, uh, the backbone of that defense, I, I knew that they were going to come up with stops. Uh, yeah, we were gassed, but we had so much faith in them. I've seen those guys in the weight room and everything that they've invested, the 5 a.m. wake-ups and everything that they do. I, I knew we were going to dig in and get stops, and we kind of just had to give them a little bit of break on offense, but that defense did a great job all day long. Anthony, you've been here a, a while. I think you were here for the 2017, and you've been here about half the time Coach Tillman's been here. Uh, can you talk about what Maryland lacrosse, since this is the last time we get to do this, what Maryland lacrosse has meant to you over the past six years or so? I mean, it means the world to me. Uh, the, from Matt Rambo, Colin Hecock, Connor Kelly, all those guys, each year you learn something new uh, and taking those lessons and going on to later in life and using those lessons. Uh, I mean, the biggest thing we preach is be the best, and I mean, that's just more than on the field. I mean, Coach Tillman and all the coaches have taught me so many lessons off the field. Uh, probably, honestly, more lessons off the field, how to hold myself to a higher standard than on the field. Uh, obviously, that resembles some things on the field, but this program means the world to me. Uh, I love Maryland lacrosse, and that'll never go anywhere. We have any other questions for student athletes? With Viner Four Gates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. 
If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner Forgates, where making your company work is our primary mission. Okay, Logan and Anthony, thank you for your time. Congratulations on the great season. Enjoy the championship. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, uh, you know, I had texted you a few times, and it was so surreal today for me and for Maryland fans. We were here last year, the same day, and it was like a repeat, and it was almost like, if I could be a little divine, like, you know, you were tested last year. How much did that motivate the team this year? And uh, did you ever feel like this was not redemption, but it was something meant to be? Um, I, I think the guys, you know, the way things went down last year, man, it was gut punch and, and hats off Virginia, worthy champion, heck of a game. Um, but just knowing, especially last year, every year the kids give so much, but last year with COVID it was so hard. Um, you know, our kids were testing like eight times a week. They didn't go out. They didn't see their families. Like, they didn't see their parents and give them a hug at tailgates. So the emotional, like, ending, just, like, all of a sudden getting that gut punch was, like, triple what it normally would be because on a typical year, you know, on Saturday, like, the kids can go home if they want and see their friends. Like, these guys, like, gave up so much and to come up short, it was, like, just such a kick. And you know how hard COVID was for everybody? Um, so, you know, you kind of walk away going, all right, no more Nick Grill, no more, you know, Jared. And, and as a coach, you always feel like I should have done different things. You know, I didn't do enough for them. Um, when you lose, it's always the coach's fault. Uh, but then you didn't know, like, would Anthony come back? Would Bubba come back? Um, so there were just a lot of things you had to think about. Um, you know, I, I've been in that locker room on both sides now. Uh, it's hard when you lose uh, because the journey is so long. Um, and the kids invest so much and these kids like Anthony said like you could go down through our whole team There's so many guys that like you don't know their names, but our guys love them like guys are playing You know with their opposite hand in the goal um, Guys are you know like on the scout team trying to be the other team for the week You know and watching film on the other guys and mimicking them um, There's so many guys that make sacrifices uh, so many people on our staff uh, my boss is here, so Libby, I have to give her a big shout out. Uh, our president of Pines and, and David and our staff, they're awesome. Um, they do so much for us behind the scenes. Um, you know, Anthony, our trainer, you know, we didn't know if Roman was going to play today. Um, so, you know, you get to the Final Four weekend, and all of a sudden, like, you know, Jack Corris pulls his hamstring, and then Roman gets hurt, um, and then Brett gets hurt, and in two days, you know, it's part of the luck of the draw. We don't really do this very often. We do it for the Final Four, but if you lose some guys late, you're just not the same team. So luckily, we got those guys there. Um, I don't know if it'd be a reduction per se, but I do think when the guys came back, they were laser focused. Um, and then, you know, obviously, it would be remiss if I didn't mention some of the guys that did come. Um, you know, John Donville, uh, I mean, both of us uh, are Cornell alums, so it was like we're standing there last week um, at the uh, in Ohio State, and like we're just watching Cornell play, and he's looking at me, he's like, "You know they're gonna win, and we're gonna have to play them at some point. You know that's gonna happen." I go, "Well, we don't know if that's gonna happen." <laughs> he's like, "Oh yeah, I can feel it," and he was right. Um, and so for John, who chose Maryland with, before I had even contacted him. Um, he's super smart. We have an awesome communications um, graduate program, and it's exactly what he wanted. So we kind of lucked out there because our university is so great that he chose us for the program more than anything else. Um, and then, obviously, Owen Probilski and Keegan Kahn, two, like, three, six students um, from Villanova that decided to go to the, the Smith Business School because it's such a great program to get three key veteran guys um, I thought those were huge because with not knowing if Bubba and Anthony would come back, we felt like that would buffer it and losing Jared. And then for all those guys to come back, we needed all of it today. Um, so I don't know if it's redemption per se. I just saw so many kids happy. Uh, I saw our parents happy, our administration, our fans, our school, like all those people happy. And it's worth all the sacrifices that you make um, just because you love to see the tears. I mean, the, the tears of joy, not the tears of pain. And the tears of pain are pretty tough. Second row right here. Yeah, John, when will you sit back and 
have to evaluate this team's place in history. And two, um, if you get back here next year for the final four, will you not be not to play in that second game? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's like the people who know me behind the scenes, like, you know, I try not to say much in public, so I just keep my mouth shut. But I, I do ask some of those questions, you know, um, like, are we really going back to the Midwest to play an ACC team? Um, are we really playing the last game out and we can't get a flight out? Because um, we got back at like 3 a.m. Uh, on Sunday night, and literally I'm in the front seat next to a bus driver. It's like 1.30, and this light goes off, and it's like beep, beep, beep. I'm like, oh, my God, there's a problem with the bus. It's 1.30, and we're in the middle of nowhere. And Brian, our bus driver, is awesome. He's like, I got to stop. This thing is red. I'm like, oh my God, Like we could be here for another four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and all everybody wanted to do was go home. So that started the week, and then we knew we had to leave Thursday, so it was a long week. Mm -hmm. um, but I think everything happened so fast right now, um, it's hard to think about anything other than what's going on now. I didn't sleep a whole lot the last two nights, um, just trying to pour it through film and, and deal with all the stuff, so uh, probably not the clearest of thinking right now, but uh, just more than else, just kind of relief and so happy for our guys. And I'll let the other people kind of think about where we are. Um, all we want to do is be the best version of ourselves, And that's, if we were to do that, let the chips fall where they may, and it was enough. Um, but man, to do it with so many great kids and so many selfless kids, um, and just didn't have to worry about like guys not going to class. Like if there were any issues with that, our leadership took care of it. Not having social problems. Guys like having an awesome GPA. Uh, like kids at the hotel, like our guys taking the time to like take pictures with them. Things like that, making a positive impact in our community. Just to do it and do it the right way to me is everything. Because if we're just winning games, but we're not doing things right and we're not representing the school the right way. I just don't want to do it. And uh, luckily, these kids did it um, in all three phases. And again, you got to go back to Bud Beardmore. Be the best. Be the best version of yourself. It's a hard place to be because um, there is sometimes some tough love. There's a lot of accountability. But that doesn't mean there isn't love. But there's accountability when you don't live up to the standard. But you can still combo that with the love and support, especially when they do it right. Mm -hmm. Trying to make these guys the best they can be. Sometimes there are tough conversations. And you need guys that are willing to have those. But you need to follow up with them and say, hey, this is why I'm doing it. It's because I care about you. It's not because I don't care about you. We'll go to the second row, and then we'll go way in the back. Coach, first I want to say congratulations on the win and with the succession season you had. You had. Uh, coach, uh, your team has to um, was well synchronized with the first three quarters and you know, the last, last second, second, last second. The, the quick turnaround is always tough, right? And and again, Mother Nature's undefeated. So, you know, we got, got back to the hotel room, got things finalized and started burning through film about it, like quarter to 12 on Saturday night. Um, you know, luckily, um, you know, you, you can't do a ton uh, yesterday, uh, we were really lucky. We went up to UConn and, and kind of practiced inside there and got out of the elements. And uh, Jim Moore is a good friend, he's a great guy, so really nice of him to allow us to do that. We didn't go too, too long, so you're trying to, we decided a lot of times on Saturday, we'll, we'll give the guys an introduction to the team. But it was so late, we felt like rest and sleep were more important. Uh, so. Um, Clara Hollander, our director of ops, is awesome. She had food for the guys, and, it's, and then we got them hydrated, and then we just got them back to bed. But we had, uh, we were kind of lucky. Um, we scrimmaged Cornell in October up at Del Barton, um, and the crusty old coach made the guys get in a bus and drive four hours, get out, play, and then drive back. That would be me. Um, <laughs> but we wanted to make it hard. Um, and we, we had a little bit of a baseline of who they were, and it just worked out that way. Um, we tried to scrimmage Cornell um, just because we know it's always going to be a great uh, scrimmage. They're talented and they're well coached. So we had a little bit more, you know, with that baseline, kind of knowing how they play. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, what helped us a little more this year is a lot of what they do, um, Coach Milliman at Johns Hopkins, um, when he was at Cornell, he brought a lot of that with him. So playing Hopkins twice helped us a little bit. Um, we knew the personnel from the fall scrimmage, and then playing Princeton on Saturday, we were able to analyze that film uh, and then go back to the last couple games. So uh, Jesse Bernhardt does a great job with our defense. Um, Carol Kennedy does a great job with our faceoff guys. So when Luke's winning faceoffs, and obviously we have a good game plan, we can you know kind of help our defense. 
unfortunately in that fourth quarter, we just kept having silly turnovers. And again, I think Cornell deserves a lot of credit for being disruptive. Um, we just weren't as, 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 I guess, good as we had been. I think it could have been fatigued, but a lot of it, I think you just have to give to Cornell. And we just needed to lean on that defense and Logan and just kind of hang on. Because um, everything, guys were cramping, um, guys just couldn't run, so we were throwing guys in different spots. Uh, but I give the guys a lot of credit. We talked to them about just, just grinding and, and surviving. And uh, to do that, and really, you know, two games in 36 hours is, is pretty tough. But man, we got a tough group of guys. In the back. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. I'm Kate Callaway with Spectrum News in Syracuse and the Southern Tier. And I mentioned, and you mentioned the courting oh, connection. Yeah. So how cool is it to see Logan be voted MVP and a kid from your hometown? Does that mean anything extra to you? Uh, it's super cool. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Logan could have gone a lot of places. Um, so obviously, I was selling, you know, a lot of courting stuff in, in the process. You know, how close we are. Uh, you know, only five and a half hours. Um, but um, I don't know, there was something about Logan. Um, obviously, I know his parents. Um, and uh, he just, he's not the biggest goalie, right? A lot of people would say, you know, he's too small. Um, man, that guy plays a lot bigger than his size. Um, and working with the goalies, I spent a lot of time with it, he um, and Drew and, and the other guys. Uh, so um, seeing how much he invests, uh, I'm not surprised at how well he plays. You know, I'm sure he'll give credit to the defense because that's just Logan. But. Uh, a small town kid. I think the first time I showed him around, he was like, "Coach, that school is kind of big, you know." And uh, you know, our town's not the biggest town, but uh, when he came back, we kind of walked it together, and he fell in love with the place. And I, I think his teammates fell in love with him as well. So super cool, uh, very humble guy, very down to earth. Um, again, his poise, composure, and just his upbeat attitude is huge. Because when things don't go well, he just doesn't panic. That's a credit to he and his parents. We do three more questions. Green shirt, Zoom, and blue shirt. Coach, I think it's fair to say that your reputation is that you're a relentless human, and you have put that onto your team. Your team is also relentless. I'm curious how long you enjoy this sport before you just throw a hat or a polo back on. Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, you, you know, we talked about all year windshield mentality, always looking forward. And I think that's one thing that really helped us with this year was people talked about going undefeated. We never once talked about being undefeated. We always talked about like the, the goals that most teams have. You want to win your conference. Um, sure, you're trying to win each game along the way. We just know with the schedule we play, there's probably an off day that's going to happen. But you learn from it, you grow from it, kind of figure out what you need to do better. I don't think any college coach, at least that I know, is like, oh, we're going to go undefeated this year. You just try to prepare, but all of a sudden when it keeps happening, like. I'm not doing what that, those guys are doing on the phone, but you could hear in the background people talking about that. So you get a little concerned that you, you have to counter that narrative of like, let's not get caught up in that. Let's continue to be the best version of ourselves. And again, be the best, like having that saying from Bud Beardmore makes it so easy for your team. It's like each day you gotta be the best person, student, player you can be. You committed to that. If that's too hard for you, we're not the right place. But that started 40 years ago. All we're trying to do is carry it on. And I think for the kids, whether we have a great season or not, we know there will be better for life because of what we're trying to do. They can't always see it now, but we're educators more than we are anything else. And you're trying to make sure that they're getting ready for, as we're all seeing a very unpredictable and at times challenging life that doesn't make sense. But there's a right way to look at it, right? And try to be positive and be optimistic and try to make a positive impact in people's lives. Like to me, that's what this whole thing's about. But we can still, have a lot of fun together, try to win games, uh, do something that people can be proud of. And I think the guys did that this year with the selfless approach. So when I have great kids, it makes me seem a lot smarter than, I'm at, than I am. But there's a lot of good coaches out there that would have been really well and probably done just as well as I've done. Uh, on the Zoom, Philly Sports Blitz. Hey, Coach, one question for you. The, you always look back at previous experiences. What did you take away from your championship you won in 2017 that you took into today's game and which eventually saw you guys win the championship? Um, I think every year, you know, you're here, you learn a little bit more. Um, I think the biggest thing you try to do is, is try to, like, make the most of the limited time you have. Um, so you're, you're doing everything you can with purpose because um, it's hard. Um, 
you know, Josh Schmidt, our, our, our communications guy, probably thinks I'm nuts because um, I get so focused on, like, I want to win the game, but there are other obligations that we have to do, and I totally get it. But, man, each second, each minute is critical. Um, you know, we came down for media day, so we're watching film in the car as we go. Um, you're trying to get the kids in treatment. You're trying to get them hydrated. Um, and then you're, you're trying to balance the preparation. You don't want to overload them with film. Um, so you've got to find that balance of rest, uh, hydration, treatment, um, but also you got to give them some prep. But like yesterday was a lot of film um, and it was walkthrough and things like that. What's that sweet spot? Um, so the kids aren't like just overwhelmed with info so that it can, they can play free and they can play fast. Last question the blue shirt right there. Hey, Coach Josh Bender, WBC. Uh, you always talk about how selfless you guys are. And um, I, I feel like this game especially was, was a good example of it. Uh, I believe that every goal was uh, assisted. Um, I mean, you probably wanted maybe a few more goals, but uh, what, is, what does that say about your team? Um, do you think that they did a great job uh, distributing the ball? Yeah, this group's been selfless all year. Um, you know, just, you know, we, we talked about because they do a great job individually, we wanted to make sure that everybody was involved um, in the offense. And we're at our best when everybody's moving and cutting and sharing it. And we, I, I have felt for the most of the game, our defensive guys were kind of synchronized the same way. Um, and I think that's kind of fitting. Um, you know, uh, we talk about, like, the importance of – getting here for the Final Four, but it's also Memorial Day, right? And you think about the freedoms you have, the opportunity to do something like this, yet I think about guys like Billy Looney, who I coach, um, who's not with us, but he made sacrifices like that. And I talk to the guys about, you know, kids like that, that, you know, had so much promise and had so much to offer. Obviously, he's a guy that from our state that I was able to coach, but, um, you know, it's why we wear these shirts, just to, that people don't forget uh, they don't think we've forgotten them because we do appreciate all those sacrifices. And to have a group that kind of acts that way, you know, they share the ball, they work hard, they honor everybody else and not focus on themselves, like to me is pretty special, especially on a weekend like this where it is Memorial Day. There, there are bigger things in play. Um, and there are people doing so many incredible things so that we can do what we love and we thank them for it.